Good morning and God's richest blessings to you as we begin another week with a time of worship together. Let me share just a few announcements as we um, attune our hearts to God's presence. I want to welcome Reverend Ruth Fitzgerald as our guest preacher today. She is the area conference minister for the Grand West Association, which includes 28 churches and affiliated organizations. Uh, Reverend Ruth has been convening um, a weekly session of Grand West Association clergy. We connect by Zoom, we share ideas, we support each other, and uh, through this pandemic, her work in guiding pastors has been very helpful to all of us, so we're thankful for her. And I'm thankful for her being with us today virtually with her message. We do have a golf outing on August 15th, Saturday, August 15th. If you haven't signed up for that yet, please do so. You can join as an individual or as a team of four or anything in between. The proceeds from that golf outing will benefit our church youth group. We have good news to share, and that is that the executive committee met this past week. We passed a phased re-entry plan that gets us back into the building. And so our first worship service, if things remain as they are, um, because the, the plan is closely aligned, directly aligned with Governor Whitmer's uh, Michigan Safe Start plan. And so assuming all stays as it is, we will invite you back into the building for worship on August 23rd. We will send information out through email and through um, land mail to let you know what that looks like. It will be a different kind of scenario, um, but we have worked toward this. We have safety measures in place and we look forward to being able to be with each other in some form or another when uh, that date comes. But be assured that we will stream our worship services so that our at-home audience, which we assume will continue to be large, uh, will be able to follow along as well. So with glad hearts, let us turn our hearts and minds over to the presence of God in this time of worship. This is our call to worship. We rejoice in the opportunity to worship together. We need this time for reassurance and strengthening for all we face in life. Here we remember the faith we hold in common and find renewal and encouragement. It is often difficult to sense God's presence in the headlines. And we struggle to see ourselves as Christ representatives when so few seem to put faith first. When everyone marches to a different drummer, it's hard to know who's out of step. Bring us together to hear your still small voice so we can recognize you when we're apart.
on your bulletin. If you've been able to download that or print that off, you'll find that there's a unison prayer of confession. Let us offer that together now. Let us pray. Oh God, whom earthquake, wind, and fire cannot contain, we are often shaken by powerful forces on every hand that deny your sovereignty. Our doubts multiply and our faith wearies. We have great sorrow and anguish when we see things as they are with people and nations and try to imagine how they might be if your rule were recognized. It's so lonely out there with our faith shaken and no one to share it. So we deny you too. We ask for your forgiveness. Help us to our feet that we might try again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus exclaimed to his disciples, O you of little faith, why do you doubt? There are thousands who share your commitment and continue to renew their trust. Think what this world would be like if there were no witness to truth, no workers for peace, no leaders with deep compassion for people nurtured by their faith. You are making a difference. Your witness is needed and appreciated. God saves you from your foes and delivers you from the power of your enemies. Find gladness and joy in God's steadfast love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 29. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's armies, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other, so that neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. True confessions. I love Tom Hanks. I've been a fan since the days of Bosom Buddies, the television series he starred in alongside of Peter Scolari in the very early 1980s. Recently, a friend reminded me of Hanks' movie Castaway, and so I found it on Netflix and watched it last weekend. Hanks plays Chuck Nolan, a FedEx employee who is stranded on a tiny tropical island after a plane crash. He is resilient. He survives the storm on an inflatable raft. He attempts to paddle away from the island on that very same raft. And after failing in that attempt, he establishes a campsite and doggedly smashes coconuts and spears fish. When he discovers the body of one of his coworkers, he buries him, but not before taking his shoes and cutting the toes out for his own oversized feet. Four 
years pass until no one makes careful plans again to paddle away from the island on a handmade raft with a sail made from a piece of a porta potty that washed up on the beach. Spoiler alert, he is ultimately rescued on an ocean going freighter and whisked back to the US. There he discovers that his fiance has married another man and that he was declared dead and even remembered in a memorial service complete with coffin. He was physically beleaguered and then once he was home safe, emotionally buffeted again. And yet at the end of the film, the viewer is left with the sense that he is still finding a store of personal strength to face the future with hope. He is resilient, self-reliant, strong, persistent. We are living in uncharted days. Today, we're five months into the most significant pandemic since the flu pandemic of 1918 and 1919. We didn't survive a plane crash, but our lives have been disrupted on so many levels. Some of those adjustments have been made abruptly. We had to quickly adjust to a stay-at-home order, social distancing, wearing masks in public. Our news feeds are full of uncertain news. It's hard to know who to trust. People we know may have gotten sick, and some of us may know folks even who have died. Unemployment is higher than it's been in a, in a generation or even more. Teachers and students, no matter what we hope for, are anxiously waiting for decisions about whether and how schools will operate in the coming months. We are tired, tired, tired. And we get even more tired as we try to make decisions for ourselves and on behalf of those whom we love. We are sick of worshiping via digital formats, weary with Zoom meetings for work and volunteer boards and church committees. Your pastors, they're weighing the costs of gathering in person, outdoors or indoors, distance, masked, sanitized, or worshiping on a virtual platform indefinitely. We might wonder whether we are being too cautious or cavalier with our backyard gatherings. We miss our families and our friends, and yet we worry when we do see them. Like Chuck Nolan, who crafted a companion from a volleyball he named Wilson, we too reach out to friends and colleagues. We make up scenarios in our heads for coping with the new situations of everyday life. We talk over with our friends those scenarios of how do we wait in line, socially distanced? Do we have our groceries delivered? Do we go for takeout? Do we go for outdoor eating out? We adapt our daily routines and we settle for what social interaction we can justify. But our human efforts leave us unsettled, struggling, pushing back, and yes, tired. That's human nature, isn't it? To yearn for what we know, to want to seek comfort in the comfortable, to get no back to normal, even as we talk about a new normal. Some days we don't much care about being resilient. Recently, I learned of a study that proposes that children learn resilience through risk, by experimenting, being creative, challenging themselves physically. They become stronger, more flexible young people. They practice. They might skin their knees or get cut on a broken piece of glass or make a mess. And then they adapt and try again. I think one of the most important parts of successfully coping with and growing through this pandemic time is realizing that our resilience does not, like Chuck Nolan's, come from ourselves. I believe that our resilience might come from our shared experiences, from our faith communities joining together in risking a new vision. 
I believe that we might help one another remember the generations of faithful people before us who paved a risky path. Old Testament scholar and professor Carol Bechtel, one of my favorites, offers this insight into the risky pathway the Israelites followed through the Red Sea. She calls us to remember that we have the gift of the rest of the story. We know that the people eventually reached the promised land. But early in their 40 year journey, they faced the sea. The Egyptians are bearing down on them from behind and only water lies ahead. Carol writes these words. God says to Moses, tell the Israelites to go forward. The suggestion is absurd. Go forward where? God says, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. The situation is one of those good news, bad news times in scripture that we can only really appreciate if we enter into the story as participants. Imagine the thrill of wonder as you feel God's breath on your face and see the waters begin to part. Yet imagine the thrill of fear when you realize that God means for you to walk between those walls of water. What are your options here, really? You can't very well go back since Pharaoh is practically breathing down your neck already. This fact pretty much eliminates the possibility of standing still as well. Though we should probably allow for at least a few minutes of the deer in the headlights effect. That leaves stepping out into that sandy path through the sea. The option is not an attractive one, but it may well be the least unattractive of the three. We might think that we modern folks do not know what such a risky path into faith looks like. We certainly haven't had the Egyptian army pursuing us into the sea. But our own United Church of Christ history offers us examples of other church folks in other times who risked. Folks who responded to the issues of their time and imagined a new future. Folks who stepped out in faith, depending on each other and on God's steady presence. Our United Church of Christ ancestors ordained a black man in 1785. In 1839, congregations in New Haven, Connecticut advocated for and freed the slaves on the ship, the Amistad. Our ancestors, they ordained a woman in the 1850s. 100 years later, in the 1950s, our denomination was formed out of two, seeking a new vision of shared Christian principles that we still strongly hold. This denomination and our congregations are resilient. You are resilient. We have a tradition and a theology that supports our risks. But we have to practice, 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 creatively looking past the logistics and frustrations of each day and practice envisioning what our church will do and be once disease and mitigation have diminished. We can look forward to the day when we might see and hug each other, but we might also risk a new vision that will move our churches beyond what we know, beyond the comfortable and comforting seating charts, which we all know we have, and coffee hours with the same cookies, to be a voice and a force of good and power in a world that is sure to be different. We might have to practice by choosing the least unattractive 
option. You all have stories of resilience that are part of the stories of your congregations. Perhaps there was a fire or the death of a significant person at a really unexpected time or the abrupt departure of a pastor or a time of financial disaster. The shared stories of your particular settings are the foundation of the resilient future that waits for us all, together in our congregations and together in this denomination, we step off into the new vision, risking and brave. Carol Bechtel concludes her devotion like this. Yet finally, we do not step out into the sea alone. God is with us, which makes all the difference. And God, finally, is the one who gives us courage for that first step of faith. May it be so. Amen. Even as a small light in the dark can light a place that, that allows many to see, so it is that we light this candle remembering that this light reaches and joins all of us together in the separate places from which we worship today. So let's join together in a time of prayer. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for the quiet of a Sunday morning. Thank you for the homes from which we gather, the families who are dear to us, the food that we have that nourishes our body and your spirit that, that nourishes our souls. And so we gather today with glad hearts, thankful for all these good gifts and for the meaningful relationships in our lives. We're thankful for the ability we have to give away from all that is good in our lives to be of service to others. And yet we gather also because we are troubled in heart. This week has brought difficult news on a number of fronts. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Beirut who suffered great loss through a tremendous explosion. And as we look in on neighborhoods that were leveled, we know that there are many casualties and that grief is great. And so we pray for those involved in the rescue effort. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for our neighbors in California where wildfires once again are burning and rescue people are trying to contain that fire. We pray that they will be able to do that quickly and effectively. And we pray for those who have already suffered loss and who, whose homes and lives stand in the way of that fire. We pray for those on the East Coast who have suffered from Hurricane Isaias. We pray that those who have suffered loss will be able to receive the aid that is needed. We pray for those who have to be in shelters that there will be safety from COVID. We look in on those without power and those whose homes are utterly destroyed and know that there is a long road before them, which feels like even more of an insult given all that we have endured with the COVID quarantine. And so we pray for peace in that part of our country. We thank you for the story today of the Israelites who were fleeing from slavery into a life of freedom and yet recognize that that path was not straight, it was not flat, it was not easy, and yet they persevered, they were resilient. And so in the midst of a, a global pandemic, in the midst of difficult decisions being made about schools and reopening and whether it's on site or uh, online, we pray for your peace and your guidance. We pray for our leaders who are in difficult places, making difficult decisions. We look ahead for our congregation to re-entering the building in a couple of weeks, and we are thankful for all the heads and hearts that have put thought into what kind of plan needs to be in place. And so we trust that you will be with us and will keep us safe as we regather and take great joy in laying eyes on each other once again. And so God, now hear us as we offer the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying one with the other, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, as we go into a new week, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall softly on your fields. Until we meet again, may the good Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Steady now until the setting of the golden sun. Amen.